In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to all of you and to all of our visitors from near and far. I hope you will enjoy this beautiful cathedral and also our lovely city and province. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to be merciful and compassionate to others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Let us pray, draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. 
The children of Israel said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. I have heard the complaining of the children of Israel. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you should have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails come up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as the frost on the ground. When the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The house of Israel call it manna. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm can be found in the leaflet in your pew, page 89. The Lord gave them the bread, the bread of heaven. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord. You must no longer live as Gentiles live in the futility of their minds. That is not the way you learned Christ. For surely you have learned about him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life your old self, 
corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourselves with the new man, created according to the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were at the place where Jesus had given the bread, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to Jesus, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. We all have needs which drive us to seek to have those needs met. And at the most basic level, we need food and water in order to live. We have other less physical needs, such as the need for communion, building community and gathering together. We all need friends, people we can confide in, share our lives with. We also have spiritual needs, the needs to reach out to a greater power beyond ourselves and others, drawing us towards ultimate values such as truth, freedom, and justice. The first reading this morning is set in the context of the wilderness between Egypt and the Promised Land. The people of Israel had lived in Egypt, a foreign land for many generations, where they were slaves of the Pharaoh. Their need and longing for freedom was finally responded to when God called Moses to lead them out of slavery in Egypt towards the promised land. Freedom is indeed a basic need, both personal freedom and communal freedom. When it is denied, it can give rise to deep resentment and even violent revolt, as we know all too well in our world today. A person who needs, whose needs for food and drink are fully met, but whose need for freedom is denied, will still be deeply unhappy. In today's first reading, however, whereas the people's need for freedom had been responded to, their most basic need for food and water was not being met. And they expressed this view to Moses that slavery in Egypt, where they were, were well fed, was preferable to freedom in the wilderness, where they were starving. Important human needs can seem of little consequence if still more basic needs are not being met. 
According to our reading, the Lord went on to respond to the people's cry for food in the wilderness by giving them manna. The scriptures suggest that the Lord works on the principle of first things first, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, housing the homeless, meeting those human basic human needs comes before other forms of ministry to people. In last Sunday's Gospel reading where Jesus met the basic need of the multitude by feeding them from the five loaves and two fish. Today's Gospel reading is said in the context of the day after that feeding. And the same crowd come back to Jesus looking for more of the same. On this occasion, however, Jesus attempts to move them beyond their preoccupation with physical needs and the physical focus on their physical needs towards a more greater attention to their spiritual hunger, their spiritual needs. Do not work for food that cannot last, but work for food that endures to eternal life. The sense of what Jesus is calling for might be better expressed as do not work only for food that cannot last, but work also for food that endures to eternal life. The same both together we need. We need physical and spiritual food. Jesus is calling on them to pay attention to the deeper hungers and thirst in their lives. That call of Jesus remains very relevant in our world where most people's basic needs for food and shelter and clothing are met, even in Canada. And where the danger of, is that people will immerse themselves in the pursuit of too much material uh, possessions, depending on the materialism too much, to neglect of the spiritual, which we see in our kind of northern worlds, our richer countries. This is also of St. Paul's concern in today's second reading. You know, put on your own, put off your old selves, put on the new person. You know, renew the spirit of your minds. That's more important. You're spiritual. Jesus goes on in the gospel to present himself as the bread of life, as the one who can satisfy the deeper longings and hungers and thirsts in our hearts. It is in coming to him, believing in him, that our hunger for the food that endures to eternal life will be met. Our deepest longings can be satisfied by Jesus, the bread of life. Our longing for truth, for ultimate meaning in our lives can be met by the one who said of himself, I am the truth. Our need for a love that is enduring and reliable can be met by the one who said, who displayed a greater love on the cross. No greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Our need for reassurance that we are forgiven and accepted in spite of past failures can be met by the one whom John the Baptist addressed in the, as the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Our longing for a life that will never end is met by the one who declared himself to be the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Our longing to serve others can be met by the one who washed the feet of the disciples at the table at the Last Supper and who empowers us to do the same for one another. In the Gospel reading, Jesus calls on the crowd to work for food that endures to eternal life. They are to give themselves to the task of ensuring that the deeper spiritual hungers in their lives are satisfied. In response to that call, the people ask the question, what must we do? The reply of Jesus to their question is striking and is very simple. You are to believe in the one that God has sent. The works that Jesus, that God wants can be boiled down to the one work of believing in Jesus, responding to his call to come and see. In responding to the call of the Lord Jesus and seeking to grow in our relationship with him, we will be indeed be engaging in the task of responding to the deeper hungers and thirsts in our own lives. Let us stand now, we profess our faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints,
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn now in great trust in our Heavenly Father to hear and answer our prayers on this day and every day. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Archbishop Peter, that they may, be, may continue, with God, continue with God's people, the Church, to bring Christ's love to everyone who is hungry for the bread of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our seminarians who will be in formation for the priesthood for our Archdiocese, Chris Quigley, Evan Chafe, and Shane Tucker, that the Holy Spirit may guide them on their journey of discernment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may realize that Christ's presence in the Eucharist is a daily call for us to share our lives with the poor, the homeless, and the hungry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may support the efforts of those who feed the hungry at centers like Emmaus House Food Bank and The Gathering Place, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in all areas of conflict in our world, Israel, Gaza, Ukraine, Sudan, and Haiti. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may show care and respect for the earth, our common home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the power of the risen Christ, the light of God, may bring health and hope to all the sick, and to all wounded in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for Sister Roisin Gannon, Yvonne Steiner, Anne Lilly, Christopher Anthony. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died, for the recently deceased Catherine Lanari, Kathleen Cochran, Teresa Elliott, Martin Goff, and we also pray for Patrick Drucken, Pam Warford, James, and Margaret Dre, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the prayers in the quiet of your hearts, your own intentions today. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Our offertory hymn is, I Am the Bread of Life. <laughs>
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray, graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion, passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life to your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, 
and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, with all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people. Grant that all of the faithful of the Church looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us, keep us attentive to the needs of all people, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostle St. John the Baptist and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed Lord be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is number 6.1 in the Celebrate in Song, Bread for the World, 6.1. Bread for others. May we who 
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 6.30 in the Celebrate in Song, Table of the World, 6.30. <laughs> Seek the 